The sacred nature of the temple was handed down from the Templars to the Freemasons, who are said to have originated from the ancient knights. Masonic philosopher Albert Pike wrote that every Masonic lodge is a temple of religion. Another Masonic philosopher, Albert Mackey, wrote that of all the objects which constitute the Masonic science of symbolism, the most important, the most cherished by the Mason, and by far the most significant, is the Temple of Jerusalem. The spiritualizing of the Temple is the first, the most prominent, and the most pervading of all the symbols of Freemasonry. Take from Freemasonry its dependence on the Temple, and the system itself would at once decay and die. According to David Ovison, who is himself a Freemason, the dream of a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem is the true symbolism of the unfinished pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. But is it merely a coincidence that these symbols would end up on the foundation of America's currency? Is there a further connection with Solomon's temple and the mysterious Knights Templar? The Templars were there on the mount. They lived on the mount. So they were living a dream. And the dream is the same dream Christopher Columbus had and wrote about extensively in returning to Jerusalem with the gold from the Americas to build the temple. Was this the true purpose of Columbus's voyage? To finance the rebuilding of Solomon's temple? And was this desire handed down from the Templars to Columbus to modern masonry? As we have shown before, the ships of Columbus sailed with a red cross on a white background, the symbol of the Knights Templar. But despite the interest of Templars and Freemasons, the original temple begins with the Jewish people. The temple was critical to Judaism. It was the heart of Judaism. The first Jewish temple built by King Solomon was destroyed by the Babylonians in 587 BC. The temple became a necessity for the existence of Judaism. So when it was destroyed, the longing for another temple in, in the Babylonian exile was, you know, primary. The foundation for a second temple was laid by Zerubbabel when the first Jews returned from their captivity in ancient Babylon. First thing when, when Jews are able to return, they build a temple. There's Zerubbabel and Ezra and Nehemiah come together. There's a, a temple built. It's added on to over the centuries until you end up with Herod's temple. The second temple was in existence during the time of Christ and the apostles but it would also be destroyed, a terrible event that Jesus himself had prophesied. The scripture says that the disciples came to show Jesus the buildings of the temple, and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all of these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that its desolation is nigh. And so it came to pass that the second temple was destroyed with the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Yet in the aftermath of its terrible destruction would emerge the dream for a third temple and what some believe will be the final temple of all time. This arcane connection to Freemasonry has its roots in the longing for the temple, the longing for the final temple, for the ultimate temple where Haggayim, where non-Jews pray with Jews, as the old books, you know, the last old books of the Old Testament predict will happen. When does that temple get built? The idea of a final temple is shared both by Jewish leaders and the Freemasons. Yet the two groups disagree on exactly what the final temple would be. There is a common history here and a common longing. They'll never end up with the same temple. Jewish uh, wishes for the final temple 
really don't resemble what Masons want to have built on the Temple Mount, which is a replica of Solomon's Temple. With their mysterious rituals and secret practices, the Masons are often accused of intoxicating the world, making it drunk with ideas of a new age and a new world order, all of which are engineered toward the fulfillment of the new Atlantis envisioned by Sir Francis Bacon. Could it be that this is what lies behind the concept of a third and final temple? It, to me, makes perfect sense that the new Atlantis, as understood in the, in the Baconian tradition, involves the final temple. The spiritual headquarters, if you will, of the new of the new Atlantis, the idea of that temple is central to Freemasonry. The Knights Templar, the, and of this there is no doubt. They, they, they've all expressed it. Uh, all these arcane societies have let it be known that this is really, ultimately, a central goal. They seem to all gravitate toward there being a a temple, a need for a temple, except Orthodox Muslims who say, no, we're the last religion. These buildings are fine, thank you very much. Become a Muslim and you can pray in them and hang out on the Temple Mount, which is not going to happen. So that leads to a pretty ugly likelihood. If people who want a temple get their way, there's going to be a, there's going to be a bloodbath there. Also, I believe it's spiritual because Satan has always desired God's place. That's why in Masonry you have Jebulon right there on the altar, Baal, the ruler of demons in the Masonic altar. And Masons are generally, obviously, you know, being deceived. However, right there on the Temple Mount in Israel, you have the Dome of the Rock and you have the Golden Dome, the Black Dome. And within these domes, you have statements right there on Israel's Temple Mount, statements that Allah is God and and, you know, Allah has no, or God has no son, and Muhammad's his prophet, a denial of the true God and his son, Jesus Christ. And again, that's what 1 John identifies as being the spirit of Antichrist, those that deny the Father and the Son, 1 John chapter 2. And that's a harbinger of the ultimate Antichrist to come, who's going to sit in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So isn't it interesting? Here we have Benjamin Krim speaking of a coming Maitreya, who will rule as the coming Imam Mahdi of Islam. Of course, that can, he can't really rule and there can't be world peace unless the Jews, in his mind, are annihilated. And by the way, according to Muslim teachings uh, in the Hadiths, uh, you know, when the Mimadi comes or when the Messiah comes, he will destroy uh, the Jews and the people of the cross. So all of this stuff, incredibly, I mean, it fits together just too well. But praise God, because from my perspective as a Christian, Jesus Christ said, when you see these things beginning to take place, lift up your head for your redemption is drawing near. And I believe these are signs that, that Jesus Christ is coming again. And when he does come, he will defeat the Antichrist. And every knee will bow. And every tongue confess, including, including Benjamin Krim, including uh, the leaders of Iran and, and uh, Hezbollah and so forth. Whether it's in heaven or on earth or in hell, every knee will bow, declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord in the end. And what will all these things mean for the future destiny of America? According to David Overson, it was Manley Hall who influenced the placement of 72 stones on the Great Pyramid of the Dollar Bill. Since the number 72 is said to be a magical number in the occult. It was also Hall who taught that the American Eagle was a cleverly disguised phoenix bird. In his writings, he documents this account from the first century AD. There is a certain bird which is called a phoenix and when the time of its dissolution draws near that it must die, it builds itself a nest. But as the flesh decays, a certain kind of worm is produced. According to this account, it is from this worm that the phoenix is reborn. This concept of a phoenix worm in its nest seems to be represented at the top of this column on a building found in Europe. But in Washington, D.C., 
up at the tops of the 72 columns of the National Archives building, we find nearly identical carvings, all perched beneath the throne of destiny itself. Could this somehow be a veiled reference to the secret destiny of America? Watching the strength of the American dollar decline, we consider America's founder, George Washington. Around his image on the face of the dollar is said to be an omega symbol, signifying the end. But what end? Many researchers have come to believe that the plan of these Luciferian societies is that like the Phoenix of old, the America that we know will ultimately be destroyed and that from her ashes will be born a new world order.